Hey, what's up? Liron here. In today's video, I want to share with you the secret behind wet and wet technique. So this is something I've been asked about a lot recently. And what I want to show you very clearly in this video is the timing. When is it too dry to continue doing wet and wet when it's wet enough and how to really tell those different stages of the drying time. So let's get to it. So let's explore this idea of wet and wet. I'm going to try and give you a really good view of anything that has to do with wetness and drying time. So the way to do this, and again, you want to do very deliberate practice is I'm just going to set up a shape here and you can imagine this to be whatever you want it to be. It can be like an orange. It can be like an apple. It could be a rock. I don't care. What I want to show you is again, that issue of timing because it seems like to be something a lot of people struggle with. So what I'm going to do is pre wet the area uh, with some almost clean water. Honestly, it doesn't matter as much. I want to show you the, the timing. Um, so let's do this. Okay. So I pre wet this area. Now what I will do is show you currently how wet it is. Okay, because this is really important. Um, so imagine you're doing a wash, and then you wonder whether you can continue doing wet and wet or not. So let me show you what we have here right now, you see this crazy sheen, this is good to go. You can pretty much add to it without too much concern. Okay. Uh, now you do want to have in mind once again, that this will vary by climate, different climates have different drying times and so on. So let me show you what happens when I uh, start putting in color. I'm using very wet mix on my brush as well. And it still works well, there aren't any cauliflowers or anything weird like that. In fact, it's super watery and the water bunches up. Okay. So let me just lift back some of that extra moist. And let's observe it. still really, really wet. Okay, you can do so much with it still, you're not even close to um, having a dry on your or having that kind of a worry. Okay, so let's explore that I'm going to start just putting in some uh, orange here. Nothing too pretty. <laughs> Again, this is all about the technique. And because I added, you see, I added paint. Also, I added water. And this is why more and more paint bunches up here at the corner. Okay, so I'm going to lift that back. Now let's allow it a few moments. And if it takes too long, I can cut the video and let it then play. But let's just observe it for a few more moments uh, and see what happens. And by the way, we can also lift some of the wetness. Let me show you so you can see it now. If I go like this, you should see how it goes a little less shiny, okay, a little less glowy. But this is still very much wet. This is great. You can do wet in wet here, you can do whatever you want. Now I do want to remind you as we are letting this kind of dry, that if you are struggling with keeping things wet, just use this kind of a thing like a sprayer uh, to spray some water on it, and you're good to go. And it usually solves this problem. Um, it allows it more, even though there, there are drops, it does gradually make things a little uh, darker, allowing you to uh, work with them uh, for a, a bit longer. And that's really the, the Joseph's Bookfish trick. So many artists use that. Uh, now look at it. Okay, it's still quite wet. But you can feel a bit of a difference between how wet it is here, and how wet it is here at the bottom. This still can be worked with. Okay, so let me show you, I'm going to grab a bit of red. And we'll just inject it in now notice what I automatically do I start mixing colors that are slightly less wet than what's on paper. Okay, if I want the colors to hold and really show, I have to start mixing in something that's a little darker and more uh, and thicker than on paper. So let me show you my palette. What I do is I grab a bit of this color here, you're gonna laugh at me that you can't even see it's red, it's red, trust me. And you see how it doesn't move too much on the palette. That's the kind of uh, mixture I want to use for this level of wetness that it starts to dry. Okay, I can still rework it, but it starts to dry. Okay, and look at how it reacts. See, it accepts the paint and that's all fine and well with slight movement, very slight movement. Now let me show you really well how wet this is at the moment. Sorry, I moved the camera, you see very gentle sheen. What this means is that at this point, and it's, it took only a minute, maybe a minute and a half. Uh, at this point, all it really takes to create cauliflowers is just to come back with a wet mix. 
So let me show you. Let's ruin this one. Uh, so I came back. My brush has some water on it, but forget about just water. Let's put in some paint, okay? So I'm gonna uh, mix here on my palette something that's kind of moving, okay? Not even the most movement, but it is some movement, okay? It's not, it's almost T maybe. And once I put that in here, look at what happens. You can already tell that the mixing isn't really going the way it went before. What will happen here is cauliflower will develop. Maybe here near the bottom where it's still slightly more wet, it won't happen, but you will notice the cauliflower starting to occur here. Nothing too terrible, it's not the end of the world. And when this happens, you can always come back and cover it with some thicker paint. But I just wanna show you what happens when this is already, you see how, see how little of a sheen there really is here? I really want you to see this, okay, just near the bottom. Now, if I come back now with really wet, like water on my brush, look at what's gonna happen. See how it pushes the paint aside and you will really see this in the dark sections where the red is. Look, it just moves the paint aside and it will create a cauliflower, okay? Let's do this and kind of go over this process once again, because it really is important for me um, to show you what it looks like, this, this drying process, okay? So once again, I'm gonna do a, a bit of a bigger kind of shape this time. You can imagine that to be a flower. <laughs> you can imagine it to be whatever you want. Um, and let me go over this process once more, okay? Just to show you, so here we go, a bit of water. And I want you to really see, but I don't want the water to flow over outside the shape, but I'll show you in just a moment. This is really wet right now, okay? And we can actually look at it while it dries and really understand the process here. And this will again vary from climate to climate, from country to country, weather to weather, different areas, different regions, um, different levels of uh, humidity. These all affect it, but this is what you're looking for. This is the sheen you're interested in, okay? Once you lose this, um, you want to be very careful with what you do with the painting. So here at this stage, I can put in pretty much whatever I want. I can mix into this whatever color, I, whatever um, um, wetness of mixture I want. So I'm gonna put here really, really wet yellow, okay? Really wet. This is like as wet as it can, it, it can be really watered down, okay? And look at that sheen, it's just lovely. This tells us you can continue working, okay? And once I put more paint into it, by the way, the, the thicker the paint I'm putting into it, obviously it will affect the wetness. Okay, it's still super wet, but I did change the ratio. Okay, by putting in this stronger orange, I added more paint than water. So it will change the ratio, but still, and I'm gonna keep it light to really show you the, the, the sheen here for a long time. See, this is completely workable. You can do whatever you want here, really. You can add more and more paint and have no concerns, okay? And I, I am showing this really up close because I know many people struggle with this, okay? And a lot of people have asked me about this in particular. Look at this sheen. This is what you're after, okay? And I think it cannot be stressed enough, really. Uh, now, the more time goes by, again, the drier this will start getting. And you can kind of see how some of the sheen is starting to go mild. Let me show you, how can you tell this? I'm gonna do uh, another wet shape next to it and you will see the difference, okay? See the difference in the sheen? This is the fresh shape. It has nothing to do with the fact that this is colorful. <laughs> if I'll put colors into this one, it will preserve that because it's still really wet. So let me show you, adding some colors here. Let's add even some of that strong orange. But you see the difference between the two? This shape is starting to dry. It didn't take much. It took maybe a minute, minute and a half. And here you have to be careful, okay? At this stage, you have to be careful. Let me show you. If you want paint to stick here, once again, you have to mix thick enough of paint. So let me show you what that means again, and then we'll wrap it up. This is kind of the, the final demo for that, okay? So I'm really grabbing some paint here and it doesn't move too much, okay? It's not like watery, it's not completely water. It's not, let me show you what it's not. 
it's not that okay look at how watery that is it's not that and this is where you want to look at the palette you want to look at the palette not just my paper when I'm painting okay for this to hold on the left shape I really have to use these types of mixes okay to not create these cauliflowers now remember the trick that if you move the, the brush the paint won't spread out too much okay if you keep it in motion once you touch and go it starts blending out okay now for this wash I can afford to go a little wetter and it will still maintain and it won't break okay but for the bottom sections here let me show you once again how I break it came back with a wet brush uh, let's see if I can find an angle you see this it's really wet you go like this it starts to move the paint as opposed to actually painting okay that's what you want to make sure and look look at uh, look at the sheen still significantly different between these two and if I'll add a third one look at what happens now this one is way more shiny than the rest okay so you have about maybe a minute a uh, minute and a half that's in my climate it's gonna be different for yours uh, and that's what you want to be aware of as soon as it hits that critical point of drying maybe beyond 30 percent and we've seen it happen here that's when you want to let it dry don't mess with it don't touch it let it dry before you come back and 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 rework it or add more details it's better to um not take that risk quote unquote let it dry and then uh, revisit it okay so i hope that makes sense now let's wrap it up so thank you so much once again i really hope you enjoyed this one remember a lot of this timing is going to greatly vary based on where you live and the climate and the humidity and the the dryness in the air uh, and this all affects the technique but the technique itself is the same you have to really pay close attention to the situation with the wash and be very aware of what you have on the brush and the more dries the more you have to use thicker paint in order to negate um, the the negate and match the level of wetness on paper okay because once it starts to dry if you come back with wet paint it will push everything aside as you've seen it's not the end of the world and it is fixable but just generally speaking and at some point you want to stop let it dry fully before you continue and that's everything to it you've seen it loud and clear you've seen the sheen i hope that helps leave any questions you have down below i promise to at least read all of them and maybe turn them into future videos i really really do appreciate it don't forget if this helped leave a like leave a comment again subscribe if you still haven't and i will see you in the next video